the Skeins Diaries. It's Marie here for episode 320, I think. I've lost count. It's one of those days. It's Monday the 15th of April and as promised, it's just been forever. It has been so forever and we were talking on Friday and it was kind of like we needed to get together. Ta-da! Ta-da! Here we are. It has been too long. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Oh, I apparently framed myself very quick. I framed myself. I was like wall of wool. It's the way to go, right, everybody? Yeah. Um, I'm good. I had a wild day yesterday, but I'm good now. <laughs> well, for you, firstly, you had, um, was it Knit and Gather? Well, that was the plan. Uh, and then my till system and inventory system here at Get Flogged decided that it was not happening. Oh, it was just like, oh, I shall not turn on for you today. So I called off my people who were coming in to help out. I did not make it to knit and gather because I had to spend my day here trying to force FPOS payments to work because it could only be happen through my phone. So that was my day. It was special. Te- don't you love technology? It's supposed to make our lives simpler. Mm. Inevitably, it doesn't. But anyway, mm. and it's so good to catch up because we kind of thought we needed to catch up and we needed yeah. to, um, hey, look, everyone's so pleased to see us. It's so good to see you guys good too. Good morning, I know everybody. Way too long with Epic Sale and you've had a whole heap on because you've been designing up a storm and We're getting, getting new it. done and we've, yeah, we've been a bit the same and hey, you know, it's funny, like you're casting on. Um, mm-hmm. I've just put, I've just loaded them. I haven't done the newsletter yet because I wanted to knit these first. So we had, um, just came in from the uh oh, I've gone and grabbed the wrong one, never mind. Uh from the mill, we had the some boot clays, the boot so Oh yeah. Yeah. So we've got the boot clays that our blankets were made from. Mm-hmm. So well, they are there. Ha ha. Oh yeah. And I suddenly thought some people get a re- little bit funny with boot clays. So and they I look, do. I know. Ah. And I looked at the colours, and of course, one is charcoal <laughs> and the yeah. other is silver. And I've gone and mix them with our Southland Sport. Oh, look at you go. I know, right? Oh. And I mean, people do not understand. Oh, so fa- sexy. I know, the fabulousness. This is why swatching yeah. is like the most amazing thing in the whole wide world, people. This we is love to why. Swatch. We, we love, love to swatch. swatch. And this is on a six millimeter needle. And I deliberately did it on a oh. six because so much, you know, Sits yeah, c- boucle needs to breathe, everybody. Like, that's yeah. one of the other things. If you're knitting a boucle, compressing it is not a happy place for that particular fabric. It, oh, it wants room to grow. Thing. Yeah, and it's a peg of a yes. thing to knit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <sighs> but once you pick up knitting with boucle, like, I've knit a lot with boucle, as we know. I've got two, maybe three jumpers. I lose track. Yeah. But, like, oh, I love, 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 love. I know. I know we haven't got a lot of it. It's um there's like I think there's only a, a, a half a dozen packs of that. Oh. Um, but it's like if you uh if you're wanting like all the weavers out there, I now know will be like excited because they like boucle on its own. But yeah. I just looked at that and see like the ratio poncho that I do, um, you could yes. do it with a single colour ratio or a bicolour like that. Well, you remember that photo. So I was at Rod and Gun the other day, breaking yeah. news. Um, <clears throat> I was at Rod and Gun the other day, and I was standing there looking at this jumper, and I couldn't help but immediately text Marie about it because I was like, if you held pulse and whisper fine together, because in case everyone has missed the news, the look this season for men is fluffy. Yep. And mild. Fluffy, fluffy, was, fl- fluffy, fluffy and mild. mild. Yeah. Fluffy and marled stripes. So you know how you can make fluffy marled stripes with half the effort, everybody, get some pulse, get some boucle, knit it up. You'll be ready to go. Yeah. And if you want to do the saying, it was great to meet you the other day. Bought um, oh. uh, bought Libby in to get flocked on Friday morning. Shame it didn't work out for the first and gather market day yesterday, but the vibe was incredible. She said, "So good. Thank oh. you so much, Barbara. Yeah, it was really lovely to see Libs on Friday as always, and oh, got a quick little catch up with her while she was in store. Then." Some other fan favorites. Vanessa from Hanging Rock Roof popped in yesterday. Uh, it was actually just a really nice weekend to catch up with some people. Canterbury Knit and Gather brought some great people into the region to catch up with. And, you know, it is always really good when we all get together as knitters because it's just so good to see all the different diversity and things that we bring to it. So, yeah, I'm sure it was awesome out there. I will be out there next year. 
God willing, but you never know. Oy. Did I wake up intending to buy an iPad this morning? No. Um, did I go buy one? Yes. yes. <laughs> Is it pink? Obviously. Um, breaking news, oh, it's everyone. So yeah, no, it is frustrating when um, your technology lets you down, as you know. I mean, with, yeah. seriously, I, I mean, literally. You have like, some sort of gypsy curse, I swear. That's oh, no. Happened. My husband calls it the busky Dresden effect. And if you've been a reader of the Dresden Files, you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy with this. That book plays up on the sale page now. It's only $5.95 of all. So um, oh. do grab that. Now, before I dive into my bag over here, it's love note 3.0 oh yo, no no i'm talking about what you're wearing the short collar oh, it looks fabulous thank you so, thank considering you. So, i saw that in the process and the discussion yeah so this is the upcoming snowden pullover yeah. once things have settled down i'm going to finish the second sample and the third sample so people can see all three of the options so there's a short sleeve version of this as well that just has a ribbed cuff around here so that one's already underway and then there's a third option where instead of using short rows to shape the shoulders, we're using a sloped bind off. So for those of you who aren't short row friendly, which, hey, short rows are not a beginner friendly technique. So just remember everybody, if you're out there, if you're helping a beginner and you're recommending a pattern, if it has short rows in it, that's not beginner friendly. So, but I wanted to build a structured, fitted, thoughtful pullover that would teach people a variety of different finishing techniques that they might not have seen before. And I wanted to give people the ability to grow with a pattern, right? So as your knitting skill increases, you could add more of the detail into this over time. So you might start with just a long tail cast on for your cuffs instead of the two by two tubular. And then you might end up doing short rows on the second or third one. And I'm just going to tell you, if you knit this for yourself or for a man in your life, you're going to be knitting more than once. I'm not sorry. Uh, I'm on my third one right now, which I'm doing entirely in spin cycle because I have absolutely no restraint. Yeah. Surprise. It's okay. I'm making one for every day of can because I'm going to do the pattern launch at can. So um, four. I know I've got one more to do. I've got one more, but I'm almost there. Uh, just wait till you see the idea for the last one. Hint. Issager. Double hint, Eve's Klein Blue. Oh, good grief. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to be visible at 220 meters in that one, everybody. It'll, it's like, it's the high vis blue color. If blue ever had a high vis, it would be Eve's Klein Blue. Uh, I just wrote a whole article about this for the flock online. I was in a deep Eve's Klein Blue obsession. Myself and Olga Berea Kefelian are like weirdly obsessed with Eve's Klein, who's a French modernist artist, everybody, if you're not familiar who figured out how to make this paint that's incredibly vivid and then everybody went nuts for the color and it's actually like visually assaulting when you see it in person like it hurts your eyes it's amazing and when i was about 12 i was at the art gallery of ontario and they had um his canvas bodies in motion on display and i've been obsessed with eve's kind blue ever since um anyway Wow, I'm a boring person sometimes. But yes, so this is Snowden. It's knit flat from the bottom up. It's an oversized, so gently proportioned drop shoulder pullover with a detail that pushes this sleeve out and over the edge. So we're increasing along this row to extend the shoulder cap so that it's actually hitting at that mid bicep without increasing the bulk in the body. So for those of you who, are, who may be a little bit um, blessed in the chest, uh, but also have some larger upper arms. If you struggle to get a drop shoulder that fits, boy, oh boy, have I found a solution for you. Um, and this one does feature the doubled shawl collar. So what happens with this is you knit two pieces, this little guy and this little guy. They wrap up and around. It's only seamed down here at the front along the side seams, but it's not seamed down on the interior. It's folded and then the back neck is sewn down. What that does is it gives a huge amount of flexibility inside of this portion. So this is just kind of one of those structural elements that's been, I would say, lacking in knitwear over the past 30 years. And you know what, let's be blunt, men have been ignored in knitwear. Uh, so I'm definitely on a bit more of a male body focused journey with my patterns. I think everybody who buys them can tell that. They've got deep arm skies, wide sleeves, and really tailored shoulders. And that's what men's bodies overall need. 
so, which of course segues yeah. beautifully into oh. our CAN masterclass. Oh my which goodness! Is, um, yeah, which we've decided with our tongue firmly lodged in one's cheek to mm-hmm. call gender bender, uh, yeah. because it's looking, as you said, men's knitwear has been overlooked, but also too, um, there has been a lot of knitwear that has been people have been too rigid about yeah. what they believe they can and can't knit um, for whoever it is in their life. Exactly. And it's exactly. how do you take a design that you may already have and with simple modifications um, make it fit anybody. Totally. That's the whole thing, right? So the the other part of that that's going to be going on is I am happy to announce that I got some agreement from the one and only Truly Myrtle. And I'm gonna be doing a reimagining of one of her classic patterns. So one of my favorite Truly Myrtle designs is Hina. It's a slip stitch textured, shawl collared uh, pullover with a raglan sleeve. And it's meant from the top down. We're gonna be introducing you, Libby and I together at CAN, to its counterpart, Hino. Uh, so Hino is going to be a bottom up, a, kind of sexy smoking jacket style, deep raglan with that same slip stitch texture and a belt. Mm. And yeah, so we're gonna be doing this in the classic New Zealand 8.5 Vespers by Lisa F. Uh, and you know, we'll be bringing it up to Cannes to rock out and show all of you what you can do with it, including a fun idea that I have for using some spin cycle just to do the slip stitch texture. So we're gonna show you all of those techniques and all those great things. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have a Hina made in my size, exactly the pattern. And then I'm gonna bring Hina with me. And we're gonna use this as a great way to look at, you know, why I suggest that we make these changes for different bodies. And I think that it's gonna be visually impactful and also then give you ladies at home and some of you guys watching as well, the chance to make gorgeous matching sets for you and your partner, which will just be super. Like imagine heading out to like a nice barbecue with your mates and he's in Hino, you're in Hina or vice versa, or two of you are in Hino, no judgments here. Uh, and you're just gonna look amazing. Yeah, and it's in the so that masterclass so that's on the Thursday of Can. Now, if you haven't, I mean, everyone I know that's here right now will know what I'm talking about. Mid August mm-hmm. night, um, last week mm-hmm. I got the classes up and finalized. I'm really delighted with the class lineup. So, okay. Yeah, so it's essentially um, it, the, it's built around Ethan, Libby, and Lisa. All of them are coming back, all doing four, um, four classes each. Plus, it's Ethan's turn. We have a lot, we roll it around now for yeah. masterclass. Mm-hmm. It's Ethan's turn for masterclass this year. So, we had a year off last year so it's so good to have you back watching this year and I'm so happy to be back yeah it's great and also too I've got a new tutor in Annette Montgomery and then I've got Delene coming back and so exciting and Cheryl Lyle um her two classes last year sold out in a nanosecond um I've actually repeated both of them and that's her Harry Flash crochet which is the crochet jacket that sort of granny square crochet jacket that everyone loves and she did a mending class that was off the chart It was so, so good. Um, So that's, yeah, so have a look, nights. Uh, dot co dot nz forward slash classes so and you will see them there. yeah so i'm going to be sort of updating the website and just doing a few things um with uh you know more sort of pictures and descriptions yeah. and things like that but i'm really looking forward to it this year everything's sort of all locked and loaded and uh there's already a really neat buzz about it and and the fact that i've actually had to go back to the crown hotel and get the room there so, so exciting yeah which is neat because that was the one uh feet bit of feedback i got from last year was that um, people were wanting more classes. Like they, they, they just, yeah. everything sold out so quickly. And um, so it's good. It's excited to be it growing is. and it's excited to be back with everybody again. Yeah, like, it is. Last it's- year was such a party. So yeah. if you haven't signed up for Can yet, if you're wondering if you should, even if you just come and hang out, if you don't book any classes, if you get in and it's too late, it is worth it. Come hang out in the mm. trading hall all day with your knitting. You'll meet tons of knitters from all over New Zealand, some who come over from Australia. And it's just a fabulous group of people. We had some people there from the UK last year. Mm -hmm. Like it was absolutely wonderful. And yeah, and I do, okay, I'm gonna gonna continue spilling some secrets. Also, my soiree jacket is gonna be launching for Cannes this year. So that is a top-down brioche. Yeah, you'll never guess where I got the name from. 
Um, so if you are coming, you will be getting a free copy from me of the soiree jacket if you sign up for the canned soiree while you're there. <gasps> I know, right? Yes, yeah, so I'm just really looking forward to it. I'm really so. Uh, registrations open. Registration yes. open on May first, which is a Wednesday this year, ten a.m. So I'm really looking indeed. forward to it. Actually, Charlotte's got a great comment. She's saying there's lots of diversity in the shape of men's torsos, which just may may be overwhelming for some knitters. They're often larger than us too, so more time and investment. Also, I don't know if there's all. I don't know if they all appreciate the time and effort and skill that goes into a knitted garment. Just my thoughts. Look, Charlotte, I know what you mean. I think they think that, you know, we just whip one of these things out for them while we're sitting there watching the telly. Um, I know that I knitted, uh, was it, it would be two years ago. Martin. The Limerick Henley. The Limerick Henley yeah, for my husband. I have to say, he loves it. He thrashes it. Um, it's his just go to smart go out jumper. And, uh, and he and it's it's actually I love the fact that he wears it and loves it so much. And I have yeah. to say, it's worn incredibly well. It ha I have not once had to depill it. Um, I know. And what did you do that in? Was that in Kelly and uh, Co? The Kelly and Co. Yeah. yeah. It's mm. uh, and it, and it was written for soft Donny Gall. So I yeah we, yeah so it, yeah you know, so I knitted it Perfect. in a soft Donny Gall. Um, and it was yeah. Are you saying it came out? Oh, I know, and I didn't make yeah. any. What well, did I make any? Oh, actually, I tell a lie. I made one slight adjustment, and my one slight adjustment was is the pattern. I needed a little bit more ease in the pattern, so I did actually jump up half a half a needle size just to buy me that little bit of extra ease. But it didn't hasn't. You know yeah. what's interesting? That Limerick Henley is a great example of really thoughtful men's design. So. Charlotte's pointing out, and this is something that you'll notice about this shape right here. There is a lot of diversity in the shape of men's torsos. There's also a lot of diversity in the shape of women's torsos, guys. And if you're able, yeah, right? Like how many of you have two breasts that are exactly the same size? None. Um, <clears throat> and if you're able to make, sorry, sorry too soon. Um, if you're able to make that work. It's you're such an expert in that department, darling. But anyway, keep going. I mean, I have seen and touched more than... I think any straight man ever has. Let's be clear here. There's been far too much time of Ethan with the girls. Yeah. Um, the uh, the like modifications that we need to make to accommodate mm. male bodies, what we're talking about usually is that pressure against a garment is really uncomfortable the more muscular you are. So what we want to think about is something like the Limerick Henley that has a break in the middle where you can leave those collars unbuttoned. That's what brings in the comfort, right? Yeah. Just bought carbonate and books. Oh, yes. The Bruma, the Bruma pull up store. I'm just seeing it. Yeah, no, from it. Jean. I know. Well, that was part of the reason why I did that too. Shocker. Um, anywho, uh, yeah, it, well, you're right. And I mean, the Limerick Henley as well was done in pieces. And mm -hmm. it was uh, the part of the reason. And, and as Ethan was saying, more muscular body. So Ethan knows my husband well, and he's got shoulders like that which are like this and biceps like that. So it was something that I was able to, I knew that the shape of the pattern and the shoulders, it had this raglan with an exposed <clears throat> raglan that was beautiful and structured and the fit on him is perfect, you know, and it's, yeah, it makes a huge difference, a huge difference to get a good fit. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm just reading Charlotte's second comment. Yes, Charlotte. That is the other key. Most men's knits just come out better knit flat. Yeah, they do. Um, it, you know, the lovely Guy is somebody. So Guy is a fantastic knitter, wonderfully talented. You've had a chance to interact with him in skeins uh, anywhere that you've interact with him. You'll oh. know exactly who I mean. Well, but it's even holidays, so you might be in here, Guy. <gasps> guy. You could be lurking. Um, Where are you, Guy? But I know that even Guy has had some issues with some top-down knits yeah. not quite fitting, which is not him as a knitter. I want to be clear here. That is a pattern failure. Mm. Uh, and so, but when we reimagine, come back up from the bottom up, mm. that's where we've got the chance for men's knits. But what do you have in your bag of tricks next to you? What do I have in my bag of tricks? So I, um, I was talking the other day and I've, because uh, I got so excited and inspired about getting all the canned stuff out, I thought I need to I need to get back onto some, you know, of those designs that I had chugging along mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. So way, way back in 2019, I knit this. Oh one. yeah. I remember that guy. You remember that guy? 
Yeah. And then I knit its buddy, same yarn, yeah. but different, you know, colored because I had, yeah. Anywho, it, so this was a cowl that I had done with this tessellating pattern, which I just yeah. love. And I wanted to uh, launch it. And so I'd knit this second sample in um, February of 2020. So we all know what happened after that, don't we? So, so if it's been Hello. on the back burner since February 2020. And then oh I've got a new yarn coming out called Zodiac, which mm. is up with the photographer at the moment. And the stock is just, um, it's all being, it's all through now at the mill. And we're just, um, it'll be here this week. And I'm, fingers crossed, I'll be launching that on Friday if all goes well. And this is still a little damp. So I grabbed, I had some incognito that I'd taken away with me um, on holiday. And I was going to knit this herbalist swan show and then anyway I started doing it and the, it wasn't a good yarn match for the design um mm. I hadn't really I'd made yeah I it needed something a little bit more toothy and the uh, incognito that I had is this beautiful twist on twist um super soft um yarn so I suddenly thought you know what I've got that sitting there um I'm going to revisit the cow so yes oh so yeah, I got that little bad well. boy up over the weekend. Yes, we love it. Yeah, and I've um, well, firstly, I needed to see if I can and remember how to knit it because it's been I a while. I was about to say, did you actually write down what you did? No, no, don't be stupid. Chardonnay was involved, Ethan. Of course, I didn't write anything down. Oh Jesus! And this is me. Good grief! So I actually have made a, a, a modification from this version to this version. Uh, and that being, I've done the ribbing in a different um, size needle, and I've actually upped the needle in the middle. Oh, there we go. But actually, look at that. Don't, is, I mean, isn't that pattern fabulous? It is fabulous. You it's can't fabulous. beat a repeated tessellating shape. As <laughs> Andrea has apparently just discovered. Can, sorry, everyone. Just just a 10-second break. Can we also just have a moment for the fact that knitwear designers have just discovered, just discovered double garter stitch? Like... I know. Okay. Anyway, anyway. moving on, everyone. Moving on. Back to regular scheduled programming. Re back to regular scheduled programming. So um, those were just the three colors that I happen to have at home in my bag. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. So I'm going to do – I'm going to put my chicken scratch down onto um, – I have written notes now, and I'll send my chicken scratch up to um, Delaine because she then takes the chicken scratch and, you know, if she can decipher it, then anyone can. Uh, yeah, and I'm hoping um, I'm going to, to get that one out um, for sort of, you know, just for the winter, just freebie for everyone yeah. who launched with Zodiac. So that's that's the plan, Stan. So cute. And what's the composition with Zodiac? Are we announcing that? Do we know yeah, about uh, it? The happening? Zodiac is, I knew you were going to ask me that, it is um, Merino Tinsel. Ooh, yes. So it has yes. a shine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it brings that depth to it. It does. I... So in, in, in every single color, of the, every zodiac sign has a color. So the colors in the yeah. range are assigned to the colors of the zodiac. Perfect. And oh. I'm assuming then that Taurus is pink. Yes, I think I'm going to think Taurus, Taurus is pink. It's, yes. <laughs> I'm just going to have someone. Uh, can someone chuck me one of the skeins on the counter? You know the one. Yeah, buddy. No, I've got a big one next to me. Well, I've been bad. Oh, what have you and done? I've been so I've been talking to my friend Daphne, who I think you've met before. Okay, and Daphne owns a delightful yarn company based in the UK called The Fiber Co. So we're going to tell your lovely watchers first that we can confirm that the box is on the way full of fiber company goodness mm -hmm. so we're starting off with some acadia and so uh this is acadia by the fiber Co. now the fiber company is a company based in the uk started off in the us and then moved to the uk and it is a gorgeous gorgeous blend mm -hmm. of yarn so this guy spun in peru and then dyed in the uk and they use a three-phase uh kettle dyeing process to make this yarn which creates an incredible tonal depth of color it's super beautiful it is 60 percent 20 micron uh merino 20 percent mm. silk and silk wall mixed together which gives it this gorgeous rough rustic visual texture but the hand feel is incredibly soft and then 20 percent super fine baby alpaca 
Oh, good. So, and it comes in 15, 50 gram skeins. We're getting six colors to stock to start with. And we have the rest of them up for pre-order if you ever want to hop in on it. And we will bring them right in. But yes, so we're super excited. And I just thought I would tell your guys first because I'm making a new cardigan pattern. God, that would, those, that would be perfect too for this cow because it's the cow's done in DK. Exactly. So here is a cardigan all underway to show you guys in it. And it just has, this isn't even blocked. And look at the drape mm. and the fluidity on that fabric. So let's get excited. This is going to be a year of good yarn. I, mm. I can feel it, everybody. I can feel it in my bones. Yeah. So yeah, we are super pumped. Super, that super is fun. that is so pretty, and it well, and this is just it. Like I just got really excited. I thought, no, I need to do it. I need to, yeah, um, to get this back up and running. And I actually forgot how much I enjoyed knitting it. You know, like the, yeah, so, and and it I just. Know, but you are the accessories queen. I am the accessories. Like, queen. I have in my our. Head, oh no, it's about the same. So I just the same. In our little group of designers, you pump out more accessories. Well, I guess I'm kind of the hat king. I make a lot of hats, yeah. guys. It's ever it's so slightly thing. smaller yeah. than the original, but um, it's gorge. Yeah, and I and I've got it that that took three balls, so one of each color. Um, there we go. Which is you know what what you're wanting as well. Yeah, well I like accessories Absolutely. and they're quick and they're easy. So I've got the hat that goes with that, and then there's that, and then um the other one I have also scratched down. Of course, my ever after cow, which I've done for forever in the midst. I have actually knit a hat version of that several times. Ooh, um, yes. but I've never written it down, so I need to. Ooh, no, that write that well. shit down. Yeah, I know. I need to write it down. Uh, so that possibly, that could possibly be going into the goodie bags for Can if I get my shit together, basically. Uh, but that's the plan, so Stan. Good. It's the plan, Stan. Amazing. Yeah, it is It is quite Amazing. good. And what are, so you, you're provisionally casting on there. Is that for, what are you doing there? I'm provisionally casting on. So this is the second front of this cardigan. So this is the right front. The left one's already done. The fronts take about a day each to knit, so I'm just going to try to hammer this out. We're running a knit along right now from April 4th to May 4th, knit fast, die warm. And uh, I know, <laughs> we're cheeky. And so it has three really simple categories. If you've already cast something on, feel free to jump in, okay? So we are doing uh, a really simple thing. It's knit something, knit a garment, flat, in the round, or knit one of my patterns. Just has to be off the needles. You don't have to block it or seam it to enter. Mm. Send us an email with your finished thing. Has to be in a yarn that we sell, but not necessarily yarn you bought from us. Because, like, those rules are silly. People who do that are nuts. If people are doing that to you in a knit along, don't participate. That person's being crazy. Um, <clears throat> so, moving right along, we are super proud to welcome anybody in who wants to do this. But this is actually another can segue. <laughs> This is my classic two by two tubular cast on. Uh, so if you're somebody who has often wondered how to get those really clean, beautiful edges that are structural and sound and simple and durable, this is the way to go. Yeah. And I mean, I can do it pretty much in my sleep now uh, because I do it so much. And I think that all of you will just love learning the process of how to do it because it is really enjoyable once you've got the skill and it yeah. keeps forever. And you know, and it unlocks, when you learn the two by two, you also learn the one by one because there's only one more step to do with the two by two. And so I just think that it is still to date my favorite way to cast on. Mm. I haven't met anything that tops it. Well, the Limerick Henley, that was the thing. You know, I hadn't done one for years. Yeah. So and then long. I did it with that Henley. And just the, the, the finishings, it's so professional. The finishings on the cast yeah. are amazing. Yeah, Sue's saying she does the cast on. She did the class a few years ago. So we're essentially, with Ethan's classes, what we've got and done is those, um, the classes that he did two years ago, there were four of them. The two that were the massive runaway successes from that time were the K without a needle and the tubular cast-ons and cast-offs. So yes. what, what we've gone and done is just, we've he's got the master class, and then we've got those two classes, which you're doing, I think, uh, uh, cableless needling all one day, and then yeah. tubular cast-on and cast-offs the second day. And exactly. we've done that deliberately because so many of you get really frustrated because you, you, you really want to do that one of those classes, yeah. and it clashes with another class. So it just gives you two chances to be able to, to do that. Exactly. And I think we've gone and done that with um, Lib as well. Lib's got one. We actually, yeah. So she's gone and updated knit to fit, and we're and we're calling it um, knit to flatter. 
Ooh, so it's yes. like Knit to Fit 2.0. It's heading it off in a slightly different direction. It's looking, it's actually probably slightly more the feminine uh, version of your gender bender class in a way. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what yeah. it is. And I mean, and I'm going to tell you, if you're doing the master class, Libby's class will be a perfect compliment to go with it. So, and I can say that with total confidence because I mean, we all talk all the time. So, <laughs> so, so like we do know what's going on with each other's work in progress. And so it's one of those things where like, we're always seeing each other's whips. We're always putting in feedback and taking it in and out. And so those two classes will go together like a dream. Yeah, and I, mean, I really think Deline spinning is another really important class. If you're somebody out there and you're starting to get to that place where you're like, sometimes I just can't find the exact yarn I want. Deline has forced me to start spinning again. Well, you're lucky because she's not actually going to do spinning this year. She's not? I uh, know. Oh. Uh, no, what no, she's not gonna, she's gonna do a conversion class. Um, she's changed oh. about because as she said, so basically taking um lots of people have all of those little pa 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 pattern yeah. leaflets, you know, that are knitted flat for especially for kids and stuff like that. And she's going to do um a conversion class knitted flat from bottom up to top down. Well, there we go. That uh, fits right in with the total theme of the weekend, doesn't it? It does, Goodness. really. And that's what I'm just so excited Goodness. about. It's really cool. And it's just good to have these, a really good mix of classes. There's a good, I, I, say, I know I say this every year, but it's just nice to actually have everything sort of, yeah. it, it, was, it was amazing how quickly everything just locked into place and fit. Lisa is going to bring back and do again her Latvian braid and eye cord class that oh, sold yes. out so fast last year. Uh, and so that is doing those that braided technique and using applied mm -hmm. eye cords and um, different things. And it's really amazing. Structures, stuff. finishings, it's so good. You so can go good. Right and of course, we've yeah. lots of things with, um, you know, Stephen Westy does stuff like that. Um, she's doing an Intarsia Basics class. Oh, that's a bit be of Intarsia creeping around at the moment. Well, that's good because Get Flocked is running an Intarsia knit along in June. Yeah. So she is. Mark it on your calendars. We're bringing some Susan Duckworth bitches. Yeah, so she's uh, going to do an Intarsia Basics. What else is there? And then she's actually got two. Uh, what one is um, a Kitchener Stitch class? Kitchener Stitch with then applied knit stitches as well yeah. over the top. I still have to go to the YouTube video because I don't do a lot of Kitchener Stitch, but it just and a lot of people the minute they see it, their hands go up and they do yeah. this and they just don't want it's to know. It's just like seaming. People freak out about Kitchener Stitch and seaming, and I and can tell. I mean. Ditch is amazing. Like if you actually, all you need to do is get yourself started off. But once you can see what finish you get with that grafting, not only does it uh, really open up your world in terms of finishing, but also in terms yeah. of mending. Exactly. Yeah, because you can use it to rebuild whole rows of stitches as you go, and you can combine it with Swiss darning to do all sorts of incredible techniques. Exactly. So, so it's got that class yeah. in there, and then also to um, an applique sort of uh, embroidery uh, class on knitting as well, which we've had before, which has been super popular. And no, so there's a really good such a mix. good mix yeah. it's a real technical year and we can't wait to see you no, there. we can't wait to see it so of course uh you're you're there with get flocked and uh get flocked online as well so yes. you can uh sign up yeah for it. still chugging along yeah no we're banging it out here the shop has been wildly busy which has been so nice uh a little overwhelming some days but super super nice and i mean people are in and shopping while i'm doing this live podcast uh so that's always a great thing to have and we cannot wait we i have some fun stuff that i'm going to be bringing up for can including we're going to be doing some limited edition bring-ins of some isager yarns just for can that we're going to be bringing up with us so some really unusual things like their baby eco baby which is a chainette cotton and merino blend which is just off the chain, off the chain. Uh, and yeah, so just, it's been a period of really big personal and professional growth. And, you know, Emily and I are banging it out here and we always love seeing you. So if you're in Christchurch, do make sure to come stop by or visit us online. And we have classes coming up with Zandy Peters. He's coming across from the US to teach stacked stitches. I'm actually gonna start teaching every month again here in Christchurch, what? And so yeah. Lots happening, and we can't wait to see all of you.
Yeah, no, it's you know? it's going to be yeah. fun. And, of course, we're going to get together in May, so I can't wait for that either. So yes. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to be down there at the end of Come the month. That would have been down there. Up, up at Woolfest. Oh, God, I was at some Woolfest. Yeah. We will be at Woolfest. I think we're in Shed 3, everyone. Yes, we are in Shed 3. And yeah. that's right, you, because you're not Wellington, Wellington. -ing 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 -ing. No, really? I am not coming up for Capital Fiber Fest. Ruh -roh. No. Uh, I will be there next year, though. So we do know this already in advance. We've committed to being there next year, but we're just doing, we're literally, we're just doing Woolfest because of the amazing Margaret, who I love and adore. I would not skip her event. And we're coming up for Cannes, and that's it. So if you want to catch Get Flocked on the Road, just two chances this year. Yeah. It's like with it's like, and see, it's only two for me, too. So there's uh, Capital Fiber Fest and uh, Wolf East, which are, of course, both next month. So it's, yeah. yeah, busy old yeah. month. All right, I'm going to let Ooh. everybody get going for the day. I hope you've had a it's really okay. good day and keep yourself knitting. And yeah, and, I, and oh, and just to remember everybody, I won't be here on Thursday. I will be here on Friday. I've just got to do a little road trip up to the Bay of Plenty. So I will be back. Oh. Um, to, I'll be back at work on Friday. So I'll see, change it up and change it up and do it Friday. Okay. Fresh, new. Take care, everyone. Bye, everybody.